I'd like to thank everybody for coming out this morning. Um, hello. On behalf of the MOOCs, Maker, Mobile Technologies, and Disruptive Technologies Affinity Group of the AAAS Science and Technology Policy Fellowships, and that's MadTech Ed for short, uh, I'd like to welcome you to today's symposium, Making Education Great, Expanding Support to Broaden Access and Participation in STEM Education Through Making. I'd first like to thank, thank our sponsors for today's event. First and foremost, I'd like to thank our wonderful host, the Marion Koshlin Science Museum of the National Academy of Sciences. I'd also like to thank the AAAS Science and Technology Policy Fellowships who fiscally sponsored this event, including the wonderful breakfast we just had and the lunch we're all enjoying today. And if you didn't realize, there, if there are refreshments in the back. There are, um, there's breakfast and coffee, which is very important. Um, I'd also like to thank all of our sponsors for the mini challenges and playing lunch. In particular, our principal sponsor for the DC Mini Maker Fair, Lego, who uh, came out full force yesterday and also today, as well as Kiva and Tiny Circuits uh, uh, as well. So can, can the two Kens and uh, also Kristen stand up for a moment so I can properly thank you. Thank you so much for your, your sponsorship. And for all of the speakers who have kindly agreed to provide their time for office hours later in the day, so I, I want to know how many of you guys had an opportunity to go to the DC Mini Maker Fair yesterday? Okay, most of the room, that's great. Um, so as you could tell, it was attended by thousands of DC community makers uh, and community members from one to 100. And with over 50 makers, the inaugural DC Mini Maker Fair was an opportunity for the greater DC community and maker community um, at large to show and tell the DC community what they've made. And I think they did a really, really excellent job. Many of you also exhibited yesterday, so I'd like to thank you for that as well, for coming forth and just really sharing in a wonderful, although hot day yesterday. Um, and no one that attended really could deny the hold that making has on the entire community, um, both on kids and adults alike, um, building with Lego and Kiva planks, uh, folks learning at Harris Educational about how the telegraph and light bulb work through hands-on science and engineering kits, preschoolers learning about circuitry with squishy circuits and paper circuits, Thank you, Koshlin, for the paper circuits. Um, and teens and adults learning how powerful even the most tiny of circuits can be. So thank you, Ken, for the tiny circuits. Um, and making, we know from this that making has the power to captivate, to allow innovation and creativity, and to empower those, even those with the most limited of STEM backgrounds, that they too can be makers and make the world around them. So today, let's leverage that excitement, that engagement, that enthusiasm about making. Let's harness it as we convene, as makers, as educators, as community members, industry, nonprofits, agency rep representatives, and policy makers um, to make connections, make possibilities, and make pathways to make our educational system great. So thank you for coming today, and I'm gonna switch hats after this uh, to give you a few uh, brief um, comments about how the day is going to run. So today, um, I did want to let you guys know that we do have a Twitter handle. It is on your agenda, and it's hashtag MakeEdGreat. It's GR8. <laughs> so uh, please use that hashtag throughout the day if you want to live tweet the event or if you just want to tweet throughout the day. Um, you can also follow MadTechEd, which is the um, the MadTechEd uh, Fellows Affinity Group. Um, we'd appreciate that. And I'd like to introduce you now to Rachel Goldman Alper. Uh, Rachel is the Director of Strategic Alliances at Maker Education Initiative, Maker Ed, where she works to develop strategy and partnerships and di diversify funding streams for the organization. Rachel has also been just an invaluable help and co-organizer of this event with uh, me and the rest of the planning committee. I'd like to announce those folks as well before I bring Rachel forth as our MC. So quickly, can the, um, the planning committee for this event stand up so can Trey stand up so Warren Trey Lake is my co-leader of uh, Mad Tech Ed I would like very much that Lori Stepanek who's back there on her computer busily working um, she was one of the main um, planning organizers and then Kip Bradford who wears so many multiple hats he's running a little late returning some of the goods uh, some of the tables from yesterday back to uh, the, the appropriate folks uh, he'll be able to hear a little bit later this is the planning team that put together today's event and I'd like to thank them all so without further ado Rachel will introduce the rest of the event Thank you so much.
so much, Dorothy. And I actually think we should pause here and thank Dorothy. She has done an unbelievable job with um, yesterday's amazing DC, first annual DC Mini Maker Fair, and um, putting together today's symposium as well as leading the uh, Before I get started introducing everyone today, um, I just wanted to say that we really want everybody to participate today. We know there are some people who will be coming to the front and speaking, but um, and presenting things to you, but really this is a day for everyone to, we'll have some opportunities for everyone to make and collaborate. Feel free to switch tables throughout the day if there's a material on a different table you want to use or if there's someone you haven't talked to yet you want to um, have conversations with them, feel free to, to get up and move around. I think that's going to be a really important part of the day. So um, I want to start by introducing Yoshi Masami. To us today, he is, um, I, for those of you, so many in the room were at Idea Space yesterday as part of the DC Mini Maker Fair. So you got to see the revitalization of the Navy Yard area of DC, which he has really been a true leader and uh, visionary as part of, so, and really for the maker movement as well. So without further ado, I want to introduce Yoshi to you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for, uh, for coming. Um, this is just amazing. We're, I feel like we got a bonus round to the weekend because we just had so much fun with the Maker Fair and uh, it just continues, so today's Maker Monday. Um, so I, uh, I'm the co-founder of Ideaspace. Uh, it's a place my partners and I founded in the Capitol Riverfront in Southeast DC. Uh, and for those of you who couldn't make it yesterday, uh, Idea Space is a place for DC's thinkers, tinkers, doers to come together and be inspired, learn, collaborate, and build. Uh, and basically, the idea was to essentially create what we anecdotally refer to as a clubhouse for geeks. Um, and we uh, are not ashamed to say we're geeks, we love it, it's fun. <laughs> and we, we hope that there are many more out there that we can um, include in uh, all of the fun and excitement that we had over the weekend and that we hope to have through all the programming that many of you create and will create after today. Uh, and you know, the beautiful agenda that Rachel and the planning committee put together from uh, Maker Ed and AAAS for today uh, has all sorts of great topics about how we can build on top of yesterday's Maker Fair and build on top of some of the programming that we intend to do at Ideaspace and many of the other maker spaces, educational institutions across the country and the globe. Uh, and when creating Ideaspace and just to sort of guide us on how to be effective and really have the most impact, my partners and I, David Mappis, Christopher Selmer, and uh, myself, really wanted to have some guiding tenants uh, to make sure we really were making a difference. And the three that I'd like to share with you today and I hope will help perhaps contribute to some of the conversations we'll have are affordability, approachability, and accessibility. Affordability, approachability, and accessibility. Uh, and why we think those three are important are if we want to be able to scale this maker movement that has emerged and really continue to push it forward, uh, we think that first, the affordability piece. Um, you know, folks come from different backgrounds, they live in different neighborhoods, uh, and they have access to different resources. Um, some go to public schools, some go to private schools, some may not even get to go to schools. Uh, and we think that, you know, affordability is, is really important. And if we can figure out ways to make places like Idea Space affordable to members, that would be great. If we can make resources for schools affordable to students and classrooms, that would be great. If we can get federal funding or even municipal funding for programs that many of you create, that would be great. Uh, so affordability. Approachability. So with STEM, or we like to say STEAM, we throw in an A for arts, uh, we think that sometimes it can be intimidating for folks. If you want to introduce people to science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, it, it can be scary for some, and it shouldn't be. Uh, we have to be smart about how we introduce people to these subjects. Uh, I, I don't have slides, but I think a visual will work. I tend to use the analogy of a gym. 
So if you were to walk into the free weight room and you see all sorts of big heavy metal, that can be intimidating. Science and engineering shouldn't be that way. When you walk into the cardio room, it doesn't look so scary. Everything looks inviting and stylish. Design typically comes into play there uh, and people are willing to use it. Some people are intimidated by both, so, uh, but we, sh we should make STEM very approachable for, for the many. Uh, and then the last piece is the accessibility. So uh, in real estate, it's all about location, 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 right? Uh, here in DC, if you live in Anacostia, uh, there aren't very many resources nearby. There are some now, they're, they're coming out, but there aren't very many nearby to get involved in STEAM or STEM. Um, Ideaspace is opening up in Southeast DC to help with that, it's one metro stop away. Uh, but accessibility goes beyond just sort of the location. Um, it also goes into things like, do you have to apply to get in, right? Everybody should be able to get in. You shouldn't have to go through a long process to get in. There's some amazing institutions, the Stanford Design Lab. Meredith was a graduate from, from Stanford and was a professor at the Design Lab. It's not easy to get into that Design Lab. So is there a way that we can make those kinds of resources uh, and those sorts of environments available on a smaller scale, but across the country uh, to everybody at different age brackets and different uh, financial background. Uh, and um, so that's it. Affordability, accessibility, approachability. Uh, I'm Yoshi from Ideaspace. And can't wait to meet all of you afterwards. I'm going to give the uh, mic back to Rachel um, so she can introduce Lisa. Thank you.